I now invite Reverend Deacon Winston Roberts to lead us off in worship. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome again to this St. Andrew Hoover platform. Our country is experiencing a tremendous upsurge in crime and murders. It is an uncomfortable situation, despite the many efforts at various levels of government governance. There seems to be, and I say seems in the commons, to be no solution to this skyrocketing crime rate. But as Christians, we believe that there is nothing too hard for God to do. It is based on this proven record that our bishop has called the Anglican Church in the Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago to be engaged in nine days of prayer and fast from Saturday. 14 to Sunday, this September 22nd, 2024. In this regard, the symbol of the cross and a format of a novena for the Feast of the Holy Cross are being utilized to help us to remain focused in a battle to tear down, to dismantle the forces of darkness which are bedeviling our blessed land. We beseech every one of us to become prayer warriors, but put on our spiritual armor of prayer to fight the enemy. We will win. We will win. Let me paraphrase the hymn writer. Remember, we are Christians. We have learned to fight with the bad within us and to do the right. Pray morning, noon, and night. The enemy of crime and murder must be put to flight. Fervent prayer and fast will get rid of the blight. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills. May be holy utterly dedicated unto you, and then use us, we pray you, as you will. And always to your glory and the welfare of your people, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, thank you for the suffering you endured on the cross to save us from sin and eternal death. You suffered to enable us to obtain forgiveness for our sins. As we reflect on your suffering, help us with the support of the Holy Spirit to bear the suffering we will experience in our journey through life. The same grace and resolve that you exhibited.
She's no sentence. Into trust. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We we'll exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it's now, and shall be forever. Amen. Now have the prayer of commitment. Psalm, Psalm 61. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Do I go ahead? Yeah. Psalms 61 and 62. Psalm 61 can be found on page 443. Hear my cry, O God, and listen to my prayer. I call upon you from the ends of the earth with heaviness in my heart. Set me upon the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. I will dwell in your house forever. I will take refuge under the cover of your wings. For you, O oh God, have heard my vows. You have granted me the heritage of those who fear your name. Add length of days to the king's life. Let his years extend over many generations. <clears throat> Let him sit enthroned before God forever. Bid love and faithfulness watch over him. So will I always sing the praise of your name. And day by day, I will fulfill my vow. For God alone, my soul in silence waits. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation my stronghold so that I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will you assail me to crush me, all of you together? As if you were a leaning fence, a toppling wall? They seek only to bring me down from my place of honor. He lies as their chief delight. They bless with their lips, but in their heart they curse. For God alone, my soul in silence waits. Truly, my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O oh people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. 
those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low esteem, esteem cannot be trusted. Mm. On the scales, they are lighter than a breath. All of them together. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once. Twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord. For you repay everyone according to his deeds. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and it shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Word of God. Written in the book of Job, chapter 40, verse 1, chapter 41, verse 1 to 11. And the Lord said to Job, Can you draw out Leviathan with a fish hook? Or press down its tongue with a cord? Can you put a rope in its nose? or pierce its jaw with a hook? Will it make supplications to you? Will it speak soft words to you? Will it make a covenant with you to be taken as your servant forever? Will you play with it as with a bird? Or will you put it on a leash, on a leash for your girls? Will traders bargain over it? Will they divide it up among the merchants? Can you fill its skin with harpoons or its head with fishing spears? Lay hands on it. Think of the battle. You will not do it again. Any hope of cutting, cutting it will be disappointed. Will not even the gods overwhelm at the sight of it? No one is so fierce as to dare to stir it up. Who can stand before it? Who can confront it and be safe? Under the whole heaven, who? The word of the Lord? Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Now, at this time, Invitation to pray. If there's anyone who would like to pray, relax that the mic be opened for that person or persons to pray. As we pray silently or openly, we consider the crime situation in our country. And we must win this battle against these.
crimes, his murders. Every time we open the papers, you see it. Blood is running down the streets. Let's pray. intervention. I pray that you will heal our land. We cannot do it on our own. We need your help. And we seek you, Lord. Take charge. We're in deep trouble, Lord. Every corner of our country. We beseech you, big Lord. Was our physical self, self, or human efforts seem unable to, to do it? We must come to you. Was you our God? Take charge, Lord. Just take charge. We are helpless. We depend on you, Lord, to heal our lands. Everyone is afraid. Beg of you, Lord. Please put a hand. The question is asked, what action is God calling you and me as a disciple to take? Let's consider that. What action is God calling you and me as Disciples, as a disciple to take. Our oh, help is based on nothing less but Jesus Christ and righteousness. And in Christ, the solid rock we stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Benedictus. The Benedictus is found on page 40. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death. 
and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We have the second reading. A reading from the Word of God, written in the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 9 to 19. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus, Lazarus to death as well. Since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they, they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's coat. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, continued to testify. It was also because they heard that he had performed this sign, and that the crowd went to meet him. The Pharisees then said to one another, you see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. and sisters in Christ. The cross, a symbol of suffering. The cross, a symbol of suffering. You have seen in that second reading that Jesus was able, in spite of all that was being done to him, he was victorious. Eventually, he got on a donkey and rode. And even the people who were against him spread branches. And those same people eventually plan to crucify him. There's always a battle. There's always suffering. So 
So our meditation as well comes from the scripture reading that is given for this nine days of um, prayer and fasting from first Peter chapter 2, 21 to 24. For this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. This morning, of to so focus on the fourth session of the nine day fast for healing. The theme, the cross, a symbol of suffering. As we sit here today, our country is troubled by violence, and crime, and fear. We face a harsh reality where many lives are broken and hearts are hardened by anger, greed, and hopelessness. Our country seems to be taken over by the criminals and their activities. This morning we gather, as it were, under the protection of the cross, a symbol of both suffering and healing. We come together in a time of great need the need for healing. We are living in a country now wounded by crime and violence. Every morning we are faced with news headlines which tell of murder, kidnappings, and other violent acts. Fear, anger, and despair grip our streets. Residents in some areas are afraid to go outside their homes. In some cases, not even staying inside the house gives a feeling of being safe. But this morning I'm here to remind us that in the face of such darkness, we have hope because of the cross of Christ. The cross for some represents suffering. We recall the suffering that Jesus endured as he was nailed to the cross, but the cross represents more than suffering. It is also the gateway to healing, not only for our individual souls, but for our country as a whole. Christ bore our sins on the cross so that we might find the strength to overcome sin and live for righteousness. As Peter writes, by his wounds, we are healed. So let us turn to this healing today. Today we look at the cross as a symbol of suffering and hope. We are reminded that Jesus suffered not for his own sins, but for ours. He bore the punishment that we deserved. In his suffering, he showed us the path to true healing. He gave us an example of the way we should approach the suffering we would endure as we go through life. Jesus did not retaliate against those who hurt him. Instead, he entrusted himself to God. To God, the ultimate judge. The suffering became the source of our healing and salvation. 
Paul in his letter to the Romans chapter 5 verse 3 reminds us that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope does not disappoint us. This is crucial for us today because many in our country are hurting. Some have lost loved ones to violence. Others are trapped in cycles of fear and revenge. We may be tempted to retaliate, but the cross teaches us another way. Christ's suffering has given us the strength to break the cycle of violence. It invites us to be agents of peace in a world filled with hostility. Our duty as Christians is to pray for others at all times and especially in times of crisis. As Christians, we are not just called to pray for ourselves. We must also pray for others, especially those who are suffering or lost in sin. James 5 verse 16 says, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. When we pray for others, we invite God into, into their situations, their hearts and their lives. Prayer is an act of love and solidarity. Let me say that again. Prayer is an act of love and solidarity. When we pray for our country, we are asking God to intervene in ways we cannot. More prisons is not the answer. Harsher penalties is not the answer. We need divine intervention that only fervent prayer can bring. When we pray, we surrender the situation to his higher wisdom. Whether we pray for the victims of crime, for the perpetrators, or for the families affected, we are aligning our hearts with God's will for healing, justice, and peace. The Bible also teaches us to pray for our enemies. This may be hard, but it is essential in breaking the cycles of violence. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, Jesus instructs us to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. By doing this, we leave room for God to work in their hearts, transforming hate into love and violence into peace. So as we commit ourselves and our lives to prayer, this morning, we are asking God to intervene, to bring an end to this violence. But before we can intercede for others, we must ask God's forgiveness in our own lives. Violence begins with sin. And sin begins in the heart. We need to ask for healing in our hearts and in the hearts of those involved in crime. Pray for the grace to forgive those who have wronged us. Let us, as we pray, ask God to protect our country from further violence. Ask for his guidance in how we as Christians can be peacemakers. In Psalm 91, we are reminded that God is our refuge and, this, and fortress. When we seek his protection, we trust that he will deliver us from evil. Let us also pray for a change of heart of our people who are bent on the destruction of this beautiful country. Crime and violence are rooted in brokenness, hopelessness, and often a lack of love. Pray that God would change the hearts of those involved in crime. 
Only God can take a heart of stone and turn it into a heart of flesh. Pray that the Holy Spirit will soften hearts and lead those individuals to repentance and new life in Christ. We must also pray for our leaders and those in law enforcement. Pray that they would have wisdom, integrity, and courage to make just decisions. Pray for their safety and for God to work to them to bring about peace and justice in our land. We must also pray in unity. We must come together as a community of believers. Matthew 18, 19 says, again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Let us unite in prayer. Knowing that when we pray in agreement, our prayers are even more powerful. Finally, prayer must lead to action. As we pray, let us also be willing to step out in faith. This might mean mentoring a young person, supporting a family in need, or helping those at risk of falling into crime. Our prayer life should empower us to be the hands and feet of Jesus in a hurting world. My brothers and sisters, the cross stands as a powerful symbol of both suffering and healing. Just as crime bore his wounds for our healing, we too can experience healing in our community to the power of the cross. But healing requires our active participation in prayer and action. Let us be fervent in praying for our country, for those who are trapped in cycles of violence and for the victims of crime. Let us also pray for ourselves that we may be instruments of peace through prayer and trust in God's power. We can bring an end to the violence that grips our country and shine the light of Christ into the darkness. Remember, by his wounds, we are healed. Let us claim that healing for ourselves, for our families, and for our country. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you, lifting up our country that is hurting and broken. We ask for your healing power to come down upon us. Transform our hearts and minds and bring peace where there is violence. Give us true courage to be agents of change and may, you be, may your light shine to us. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ who bore our sins and gave us new life. Amen.
the Apostles Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Just Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your rule. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon us. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the need be Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Let it not screw hearts with you. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself, mercifully grant that we who glory in the mystery of our redemption, we have grace to take up our hearts and follow him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Call it for Papa 19. God, because you, because without you, we are not able to do it. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Jesus Christ our Lord lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. And God, now and forever. Amen. Oh God, the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy upon us. O God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. God, the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide, have mercy upon us. The Holy, blessed and glorious Trinity, three persons in one God, have mercy upon us. Lord, remember not our offenses, but the offenses of our forbidden. Let us, good Lord, Bear your people whom you have redeemed your precious blood. Spare us, good Lord. From all evil and wickedness, from sin, from the cunning assaults of the devil, from your wrath, and from everlasting condemnation. Good Lord, deliver us. From all spiritual blindness, 
become fine. Vanity and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, malice, and all uncharitable hope, uncharitable Grant, Lord, deliver us. Fornication, adultery, and all other disordered and sinful affection, the deceit of the world and the snares of the devil. Good Lord, deliver us from all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart, and from contempt of your good and commitment, commandments. Good Lord, deliver us. I think fire and hurricane. Drought and flood, from famine, plague, and pest. Good Lord, deliver us from all oppression, conspiracy, and rebellion, from violence, battle, and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared. Good Lord, deliver us by the most free by your birth, childhood, and obedience, by your practice, fasting, and healing. Good Lord, deliver us. By your ministry, and work. Good Lord, deliver us. Econ robots. got knocked off. So just bear with us for minutes. Apparently, Deacon Roberts got knocked off. Let's see him try to come back on yet. By your agony and sweat of blood, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, good Lord, deliver us. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, Good Lord, deliver us. Lord, deliver us. Thank you. In, a, in all times of trial and sorrow, in all times of joy and prosperity, in the hour of death and the day of judgment. Good Lord, deliver us. Prayer for intercession. Hear our prayers, O Lord our God. Hear us, good Lord. Govern and direct your holy church. Fill it with love and truth, and grant that grant it that unity will which is yours, which is your will. Hear us, good Lord. Give us boldness to preach the gospel in all the world and to make disciples of all nations. Hear us, good Lord. Enlighten all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge and understanding that by their life and teaching they may proclaim your word. Hear us, good Lord. Give your people grace to hear and receive your word, to find and follow their true vacation vocation, and to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Hear us, good Lord. 
bring into the way of truth all who have heard and are deceived. Hear us, good Lord. Strengthen those who stand, comfort and help the faint-hearted, raise up the fallen, and finally beat down Satan under our feet. Hear us, good Lord. Guide the leaders of our nation into the way of justice and peace. Hear us, good Lord. Enlighten and direct our rulers. Grant that they may put their trust in you and seek only your honor and glory. Hear us, good Lord. Grant wisdom and insight to all in authority and to judges and magistrates the grace to administer justice with mercy. Hear us, good Lord. Give to all nations peace, unity, and concord, and grant to all people freedom and dignity, food and shelter. Hear us, good Lord. For all people according to their needs, Teach us to use the resources of the earth to your glory, that all may share in your goodness and praise you for your loving kindness. Hear us, good Lord. Enlighten us with your spirit, all who teach and all who learn. Hear us, good Lord. Help and comfort the lonely and aged, the bereaved, the overworked, the exploited and the oppressed. Hear us, good Lord. Support and encourage all who are in poverty, unemployment or distress. Protect those who work in dangerous and dangers and keep in safety all who travel. Hear us, good Lord. Keep fathers and mothers and children united in their family life and give them wisdom and strength in times of stress. Hear us, good Lord. Heal the sick in mind and body. Strengthen, preserve all women in childbirth and all young children. Hear us, good Lord. Defend and provide for the widowed and the orphan, all migrant workers and refugees, the homeless and victims of strife. Have pity on prisoners and all who live in fear. Hear us, good Lord. Forgive our enemies, prosecutors and slanderers and turn their hearts. Hear us, good Lord. Save the world, forgive our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may amend our lives according to your holy word. Holy God, holy and strong, holy Ooh. and immortal, have mercy upon us. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I'm seeing Deacon Robert back. Oh. Um, I was having a problem. Yeah, I was having a problem here. So we arrived at this point. So would you like to continue? Yes. I'm still having I'm using my of, of my cell phone now. We're going from the him at the cross.
We. What him said that was? Yes, sir. We are going to him one four nine. Oh, I didn't get that. Across her station keeping Stood the mournful mother weeping Close to Jesus to the last Through her heart his sorrow sharing All his bitter anguish bearing Now at length the sword has passed Oh how sad and sore distressed was that mother highly blessed of the soul begotten one christ above in torment hangs she beneath beholds the pangs of her dying glorious son is there one who would not weep whelmed in misery so deep christ dear mother to behold can the human heart refrain from partaking in her pain in that mother's pain untold bruised derided cursed defiled she beheld her tender child all with bloody scourges rent for the sins of his own nation saw him hang in desolation till his spirit forth he sent O oh, thou mother fount of love touch my spirit from above make my heart with thine accord make me feel as thou hast felt make my soul to glow and melt with the love of christ my god holy mother pierce me through in my heart each wound renew of my savior crucified let me share with thee his pain who for all my sins was slain who for me in torments died let me mingle tears with thee mourning him who mourned for me all the days that i may by the cross with thee to stay there with thee to weep and pray is all i ask of thee to give virgin of all virgins blessed listen to my fond request let me share thy grief divine let me to my latest breath in my body bear the death of that dying son of thine wounded with his every wound steep my soul till it has swooned in his very blood away be to me o virgin lest in flames i burn and die in his awful judgment day christ when thou shalt call me hence be thy mother my defense be thy cross my victory while my body here decays may my soul thy goodness praise 
safe in paradise with thee. Of the education. Mm. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our path, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time we... Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And this time we pray for those persons who are celebrating birthdays or anniversaries or any special occasion. God of all creation, we offer you grateful thanks and praise for the gift of life. Hear the prayers of your servant who we call the day of their birth and at an anniversary rejoicing in your gifts of life and love, family and friends. Now hold them, dear Lord, with your presence and surround them with your love, that they may enjoy many happy years in good health, peace and happiness. And may all of them be pleasing to you always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A warm welcome to all, and a special welcome to persons worshipping with us for the first time. Our, note, our parish office is open Mondays to Fridays, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., except on public holidays. You may call the parish office at 679-2157, or call or WhatsApp the cell number at 492-5835, for any member of our clergy. Reverend Eric Thompson at 683-9676. Our assistant curate, Reverend Winston Roberts at 484-8352 for any further information. Our 
banking information remains in the Royal Bank of Canada in the Coover Shopping Complex. It remained under the incorporated trustee of the Anglican Church in the Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago, St. Andrew Parish Coover. The account number is 1000-8000-1254-2527. Bible study continues on Tuesday evenings. Password in all capital letters is Bible, and the meeting ID is 804 702 5881. Ritual services next Thursday, the 12th of September at 6 30 p.m. We still continue, the DAS still continues to collect uh, stuff for the Windward Islands that was devastated by Hurricane Barrel. You can still drop off your stuff at the Anglican. I, I'm going to use now the the um, Anglican shop office, which houses the diocesan office. So you can drop it off there. They will label it, and collections will be made in due course. We're still moving with the Spanish-speaking program. Um, so if you want to contact, you can contact at six seven three three. 0856. Harvest and Bingo for St. Agnes Church in Port of Spain on the 29th of September. Uh, the speaker will be the Father Ayurunde. Ayurunde. Yeah, we sing along starts at 9.30 a.m. Lots to have and do. Lunch and sale $50. And you can see there it's chicken, pork, and fish, your choice. For further information and details, you can contact the office at 628-2885. They will also be having a bingo later that evening at the church compound, and it's $20, sorry, $100, you get six cards, and $20, you can get four extra cards. I have another announcement just before I go off here. Yeah. Um, just a guess. let me get it back up here. I had it a few minutes ago. Oh, Lay Minister Joan Leach is inviting us right after this service to join them at St. Sylvan Church. They are praying and fasting for Prayer against crime and murder. Fasting is encouraged and recommended from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. and may proceed to completion to 6 p.m. It's this morning. The Reverend Claire Sandy Robinson will be facilitating the exercise. We are asking if we can come up after the service to join them. So William, could I please get the number again for the Spanish speaking program? I didn't hear you uh, Spanish. Spanish, okay. yeah. Seven three three zero eight five six. Seven three three zero eight five six. Hola. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'll close in prayer by Deacon Roberts. Before before we get the closing prayer, let me thank all those who joined us this morning. I want to say a special thanks to Mr. Carl Williams um, for the service. It wasn't um, the normal thing, normal service, it's not, not as we are accustomed. And so he was able to put all these things together. I said, thank you very much for, for that, putting it together. I also experienced some failures. And um, so it was, did not go as smoothly as we thought it should have gone. So thank you very much for coming out this morning. And may God continue to bless us all. And remember for this, nine days of prayer and fasting. Please, please, I beg, we are in serious trouble. We need prayer. That's the only 
solution. Let us pray. Jesus, you suffered greatly on the cross for our sake. Help us to endure our own suffering with patience, faith, and hope, with the assurance that you are with us in the Holy Spirit. May our suffering draw us closer to you and make us more like you. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. So goodbye all. Um, see you again Sunday in church service. And be safe. Remember to continue your prayer and fasting for the remainder of this week. I'm trying to head up to St. Sylvan's Church in a bit to join them. Thank you very much, Carl. Thank you. You're welcome. You can.